support very interesting channel right now. Link in the description. You bought your first telescope and you have no clue how to find any planet, galaxy or Elon Musk's Tesla Roadster. Do not worry, because in this video I will show you the easiest objects for beginner astronomers that do not require a lot of effort to find them. They are bright, they are big, and most importantly, they are visible to the unaided eye, so you won't have to spend hours freezing in your backyard. Carry on watching, because it will be very interesting. You know, in all of my previous videos, I encouraged you to install those useless sky maps on your PC, but there is a more convenient way. I found this magnificent website called stellarium-web.org, and it's a web version of a sky map available for everyone. Here you can indicate necessary time, date, and search for desired objects. I haven't checked if this website is working on phones yet, but I think that there will be no issues. Well, it seems that this advert will not allow us to see the sky map, so... Owners of phones will have to go to Play Store or Apple Store and download a magnificent app called Starwalk 2. This is a very convenient sky map where you can indicate time and search for celestial objects as well. Yay! The hardest part of this video is over, since all objects mentioned further will be so bright and distinguishable, so you will have to know just an approximate location of them, which you can obtain using these sky maps. Now let's start with the easiest, with the most obvious thing that every astronomer is aware of. And... Uh, no, it's, it's not the moon. You thought that firstly I would talk about our natural satellite, but it's visible even during the day, and you only have to lift your head to see it. No, 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 no. The first place belongs to Jupiter. This planet is the largest in our solar system, and therefore it's among the brightest objects in the sky. Jupiter is as easy to find as to subscribe to a very interesting channel. Find in which direction it is located, and you will immediately notice it without any advice. Seriously, all people that I've asked to find Jupiter in the sky always have pointed at the right object. If you are in possession of a small telescope, there are several things that you can see on this gas giant. First of all, it's four Galilean moons. Sometimes there are four of them, sometimes none of them, and sometimes they transit Jupiter's disk. With higher magnification can be revealed typical atmospheric details, such as two brown belts and the great red spot, which is in size similar to our planet. Additionally, there are annual astronomical events called oppositions when Jupiter is located pretty close to the Earth. August 2021 is among such periods, so start observing this gas giant as soon as possible. The second place belongs to the brightest planet in the sky, or what some people like to call it, an artificially created object because it doesn't act like the normal planets or stars that we used to see? Meet Venus. Venus, in fact, is a well-known celestial object because so many people confuse it either with an UFO or Nibiru or a fake planet or my brain is going to melt. I guess this happens for a reason that Venus is so freaking bright so that it casts shadows on surrounding objects. I mean, look at it. This is definitely an alien spaceship. There are two cardinal points where you can find this mysterious planet in the west and in the east. It appears either after sunset or before sunrise, and it is frequently visible for one or two hours. Sometimes it is not visible at all due to its proximity to the sun, but you can find all necessary information in the sky map. Depending on its location in orbit, Venus can be seen as the largest celestial object or the smallest one. Surface details are covered by dense Venusian atmosphere, and only specific filters are capable of showing some brown or orange clouds. However, because it's very easy to find Venus in the sky, and sometimes Mercury is located close to it, you should definitely try to find this secret FBI base. And the third object is Pleiades, or Messier 45. 
It is a large star cluster and literally one of the few deep sky objects visible in the most light polluted areas. I managed to see it in a city with a population of 3 million people. And no, unfortunately, it wasn't Los Angeles. As a matter of fact, many people confuse it with Ursa Minor because it looks quite similar to this constellation. But the best time to see it is winter in Northern Hemisphere when it is located indeed high above the horizon. A small telescope will show you a magnificent view of shining stars and, I'm not kidding, it looks wonderful even without any equipment. Owners of larger telescopes can try to see this new velocity around some of the stars, but you will definitely have to leave your adored town. These are several tips on how to observe deep sky objects, such as do not use your phone before observations, go away from city lights, and blah blah blah. You can watch this video where I collected all useful tips on this topic. I left a link in the description. Additionally, there is another deep sky object that is located nearby, and we call it the Hyades. Turn your telescope to the left to a bright orange star Aldebaran, and you will see an object suspiciously similar to the Pleiades, but with fewer stars. The next object is Saturn. Yeah, some of you might ask, why not Mars? Well, except for times when Mars is located close to our planet, which happens every two years, the red planet is quite dim, and many beginners will have significant problems recognizing it in the sky. On the other hand, Saturn is quite bright, looks large through a telescope, and it has more interesting details to offer, such as its famous rings. In the night sky, it is seen as a comparably bright yellowish star, just like Jupiter, it sometimes comes closer to our planet, so that its rings become very vivid. Moreover, it's not hard to spot a small orange dot located close to the ring planet. This dot is in fact Saturn's moon, called Titan. It's also possible to see a thing called the Cassini division that separates two rings of the planet into two. In this picture you can clearly see it, as well as the largest atmospheric belt. And finally, the last object on our list is going to be both astonishing and quite easy to find. Meet Messier 42 or the Great Orion Nebula. We all know this object from NASA's magnificent pictures where you can see colorful places of newborn stars. Unfortunately, small amateur telescopes are not capable of showing such detailed views. Additionally, the color of the nebula is distinguishable only if you take pictures of it or if you have an indeed large telescope. The Orion Nebula is located in the constellation of Orion, obviously, underneath these three stars. Even in the largest cities of our planet, this deep sky object is visible to the unaided eye as a very, very, very blurry star. The only obvious tip here is observe the nebula as far from city lights as possible. There are also several objects that I haven't mentioned, but they are quite easy to find and observe as well. Among them are Mars that seems like a reddish star in the sky with visible polar caps and dark seas, Mercury which is an elusive b that likes to hang out with the sun and visible only one hour after sunset or before sunrise, Andromeda Galaxy which looks like an easy object for beginners, but it took me three days to find it using my 4.5 inch telescope and in the end it looked blurry just like my future, and so on. Nonetheless, these five objects will be more than enough to satisfy your first desires. Even experienced astronomers can get enough of them, and personally speaking, every time I see them, I feel awesome. I hope this video was quite useful for you. In case you want to share your images of celestial objects on this channel, you can send me an email or a private message on Discord. Just remember that sometimes it's not that easy to be a stargazer due to clouds or some other reasons. Take as much time as you need to properly observe Jupiter, Saturn or whatever you want. Just do not stop at any cost. Persistence is a key to being a successful astronomer and a successful person. And as always, thanks for watching very interesting videos. Bye.